Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Nagar Kadumu. I am the manager of public programs at the Fry Art Museum and it's my very great pleasure to welcome you to the second edition of our virtual visits. Um, this is a series of virtual programming that we are doing to highlight artists locally, regionally, nationally, and even internationally to talk about their practice, but also to speak about their practice specifically within the context of the current moment being quarantined as a result of COVID-19. Today, we are very, very fortunate. I'm super excited to be in conversation with Barrett McCauley, um, an artist, curator, scholar, and writer who is based here in the Seattle area. Barrett, thank you so much for joining us. And could you just kick us off by sharing a little about yourself as well as your practice? Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of the series, Nagar. I really appreciate it. Um, and thanks to the Fry. Um, okay, so real briefly, I am I identify as a transcultural black woman in this world and that that informs the work that I do or the work that I'm interested, whether if I am um, practicing as a photographer or as a performer or in my curatorial practice or as a writer. Um, that is what sort of arrests my investigations and my critical thought in this world and how I like to gather and organize community. Um, so my practice, it's an interdisciplinary practice or a multidisciplinary practice. My background is in the performing arts. Uh, that's what I had my first, got my first degree in and, and my earlier years of training was in theater and acting and, um, and also doing some theater tech. I used to do lighting design, sound, sound engineering um, and makeup for, for productions. Um, and also I danced with a couple of contemporary dance companies in my years in New York after I left Jamaica, which is where I grew up. Um, and just working in multiple communities, you sort of live this um, communal hippie lifestyle really when you're, when you're in performing arts. And that, um, that created this space, a safe space for me to experiment with visual arts work. And so I started doing photography, which I also studied in school as an elective, but never thinking I was going to do anything serious with it. And, um, and I had all of these performers, actors and dancers to play with, and we would just play around and do a lot of experimental um, conceptual photography work. Um, and everything just sort of developed from there, uh, practice in various genres within photography. But now my practice is... Um, investigating social justice issues, um, class, race um, topics in the various cultures that I've been exposed to. Jamaica, as I said, that where I grew up, but also um, I was born in Sierra Leone, West Africa. And so that also informs um, what I'm interested in investigating because my birth land has become a pilgrimage site of sorts. Um, and that shows up a lot in my work. The questions about where I come from shows up a lot in my work. Um, but also I've been living in the States for 20 years as a black woman here. And I, I try to put these three black cultures in conversation with each other and how they relate to these um, colonial hegemonic spaces that we occupy. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I do photography, conceptual photography around that performance within photography, working with with performers still. Um, in the last few years, I've started working. I'm not going to say I'm a documentarian, but I've started working um, in that genre of documentary storytelling um, uh, with a couple of projects in particular right now that, I'm, that are ongoing. One's called Women Who Raise Us, which is about um, black women who work, black and, um, and brown women who work um, as household workers and caregivers mm -hmm. um, in the Caribbean and here in the States. Um, I've also been working with couples who are in, pick your terminology here, mixed interracial, <laughs> um, intercultural um, mm -hmm. couples and have started families and have children mm -hmm. um, within that, that social love setup mm -hmm. and, uh, and how they experience their life choices and their love choices as a political choice. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I have a series called Memory of Nothing, 
which investigates that too. So that's been a challenge working with people who are not models, who are not dancers, who are not performers. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other kind of care. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's it, and it's not a performance, right? So right. so there's a there's a way that you have to work with people that that brings up a lot of ethical questions mm -hmm. um, about how you're representing people's stories. Um, and what you have permission to represent and whether if you have the right to represent mm -hmm. um, people's stories in your work. So that, that's been a, a, a challenging shift in my work. I play with methods. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do use primarily digital photography, but I also like the older methods. I've done tintype photography. Um, I work with um, mixed media, multimedia applications with photography. Um, doing photo transfer work mm -hmm. uh, and then I shoot film on occasion too. I have a collection of old cameras. I can't stop collecting old cameras. Um, I don't like perfect imagery. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I kind of like imperfect imagery because I think it produces more questions and gives less answers. And I don't think images should have too many answers. So, um, Another thing I suppose I could touch on briefly is, is an interest of mine is, is evading surveillance mm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very interested in this whole thing, you know, surveillance capitalism, but just surveillance in and of itself, the technology of it um, and how it's used to, to track people and to control people's agency and decision making, mm -hmm. right? Um, making itself illegible is something that I find really interesting and something that I am playing with as a black woman mm -hmm. <laughs> because a black woman has always had to in, in the western world in the recent 400 years of black history mm -hmm. so I have to make that point That's very important <laughs> I have to perform their pain and perform their privacy and perform in order to to have entry in into into important discourses and I compare that to white male agency where you can play with, with a blank canvas and that is legible enough and um, has enough authority mm -hmm. in the art world, which is where we're, you know, we're speaking about. And so I try to play with that and go, well, no, I have the right to make art about whatever I want. I don't have to just make art about my pain. I don't just have to make art about the pain of my people. I don't have to make art in one way, in one genre. Mm -hmm. I can, I can switch it up too. I'm not going to ascribe to this idea that I can. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, with that, I'm going to just toggle through a couple of pictures very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and you just tell me, you know, if we're running out of time so that I don't use up our time um, here. Um, I'm just going to go to full screen. Here we go. You need to let me know if, um, if you can see all right. Is that good? Yeah. Um, so I'm just showing a couple of pictures of, of different methods that I've used. The, uh, the, um, this image is uh, from a series called Metamorphic Return to Fusion. And, um, and the left side, you have um, a photo transfer um, composite. And the right side is the digital composite version of this image. And it's... It's a character that I've created in my work named Theriamacine in Amoya, who is the, um, the combination of several goddesses in um, different mythological um, systems from, from three, four different cultures, but um, Yemaya being the principal uh, uh, motivator for that. Thinking through shape-shifting technologies that we know about in West Africa, um, um, and imagining a way out of the 400 year nightmare that we're told we have to tell our stories about. So that's what that's about. Um, the Fisher series is another method I use of slowly deconstructing portraiture. Um, mm -hmm. Fisher is about um, the Afro diaspora of the world being um, pulled apart and coming back together. And I use acrylics to slowly pull image, image transfers apart so that they're sort of like living portraits that come mm -hmm. together, fall apart, come together, fall apart as a sort of photographic performance of, um, of the Afro diasporic experience. Mm -hmm. These are some light boxes that I've done that are also part of um, the Metamorphic Return to Fusion mm -hmm. project. 
Um, I won't go into depth about that. You can see the titles and you can see on the left the light box of Theory Amacene. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go through the rest of uh, some images for you to get an idea um, of how I play without talking too much about <laughs> what I'm doing. I play with floor piece, floor, floor piece installations as well. Mm -hmm. I, I like to play around with um, using family archive works and mm -hmm. also um, researched archive I works. I know who this is. I know you know who this is. <laughs> Such a beautiful series I did with her. She's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Um, these are works on glass. Uh, mixed media works again. This is from the Woman Who Raises Project um, okay. that I'm playing with other materials to speak to domesticity and the mm -hmm. ideas of women's work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you some of my old photography and I'll get out of here so we can continue talking. I am, I'm playing with genres a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm playing with space and illegibility and location mm -hmm. and memory. And I'll stop there. It's a little. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's really awesome to be able to have these visual insights, um, even though we are virtual, to still be able to have these visual insights into your practice. So thank you. Um, and it's cool to share it with you, you too, Nagara, because I don't know if I've ever. We've, we've no, I have. Exactly. This is the first time that I'm really seeing this, so this is really great for me as well. Um, yeah. And so obviously we, we are now on ending month four of quarantine and, you know, there does not seem to be any end in sight, though, you know, we're reopening across the country, across the world, we are reopening. And so how has your practice changed since the onset of quarantine due to um, COVID-19? So, uh... The, sh the a short answer would be, I think that in this time, it's given me a lot of, um, it's given me the opportunity to, s to sit and think about how to revisit certain things mm -hmm. within my practice, or at least what I'm trying to dialogue about in my practice. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of actually doing um, that's been, that's a harder question to answer because as, as you know, you and I've discussed before, I, I've just exited, I've just graduated from a two year program, a master's program in cultural studies. Congratulations. And, and thank you. And going through that, um, as anyone can say, going through grad school, you know, takes you away from your practice. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there's a, there's a, a joined moment there where I'm just coming out of that, but we were doing the last quarter of it during COVID. Mm. So the way I think I would have responded to COVID if I wasn't in grad school, I, I would like to think that I probably would have been doing more with my hands. Um, but I had to, you know, as all of us, we had to adjust to living our lives online. And that mm -hmm. does something to how you're able to quiet yourself in studio yeah. space or mock studio space yeah. in order to create you have to shift yourself away from this unless your 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 art form is digital mode which is not where I'm at right now mm -hmm. I I have a need to turn all of this off and COVID has not helped that along mm -hmm. uh, any more than than grad school read, reading and writing right. <laughs> for the week um help that along so that's that's something that I'm still figuring out what the answer to that is. Mm -hmm. And since we're not coming to the end of that anytime soon, but I have dropped grad school out of this picture, I'm, I'm curious to see what comes out of me. And I have a feeling that all the projects I had on hold or have been trucking along rather slowly, I think they're all going to change. Yeah. Because there's just so much more to consider now. Mm -hmm. um, with COVID and the other pandemic that we are protesting in the streets. So ending one. I think we're at, at a question now of, I think 
for me as an artist, I think I'm at a question of what does surrender to this moment look like so that I can let whatever else comes out that wasn't in my sketchbook plans. Right, right. Come out. Mm-hmm. That'll be scary and interesting and exciting, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and so obviously, um, a big part of your practice is being in community, being in conversation with colleagues, um, engaging with organizations in, in certain ways. And so in your conversations with your fellow artists and in sort of observing from afar, um, as we all have been doing these past almost four months, um, how do you see you know, some of the changes you're experiencing and the changes that you and your fellow colleagues, your, your fellow artists are experiencing, um, p- making an sort of ob- obligatory change to the art world, as mm-hmm. it were, in a alleged <laughs> post-pandemic reality. Mm-hmm. Alleged indeed. Um, <laughs> wow. So, so, that is a very thick question because um, my other practices and certainly the most foreground practices in my life right now is, is as a curator and, and also um, as a programmer because I founded um, this organization here in, in Seattle um, called Black Cinema Collective, which is still in, in its baby steps. Mm-hmm. Um, and when COVID started, I was at the tail end of the Umfon in Seattle project, which of course, you know about because Fry was mm-hmm. one of the partners in that, um, where we were putting out a catalog to go along with the five month program that we had at Fry Art, um, Jacob Lawrence Gallery and, and PCNW. And so I've been in conversation with, um, with, you know, these organizations and the artists, as well as artists who we've been featuring through Black Cinema Collective mm-hmm. about what this moment is, and through our partnerships with Black Cinema Collective as well, mm-hmm. um, chiefly the Henry Art Gallery and um, Northwest Film Forum, for how to shift programming online, how to set up paywalls so that artists don't get swept away in, in having to, you know, not only produce new works reactively to the moment, but also to give up works that were scheduled to be in in in-person exhibition or in-person screens in theaters, where they would have had a clear pair of paywalls for how to um, to earn money or to protect the works. That is something that is coming up a lot and that different organizations are innovating in, in, in the ways that they can, because not everybody was prepared to adjust right. to the exactly. artists or institutions, right? right? We're still figuring it out and, mm-hmm. and still figuring out because we're allegedly coming to the end, but not. And so what does that mean for fall programming? What does that mean for all the shows that had to be canceled? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there are new negotiations that are happening. And, and I'm very concerned about this, about how artists make um, money. We're concerned about the making of it. Artists are going to make their work, you know? They're going to find a way to make their work because we create from our lives. But how we're making a living from this is such is, is really where I, I, I shift this question to because there are different negotiations that are happening for artists because they are not showing up in person, because they're showing their work digitally. Mm-hmm. They're being negotiated down from their normal um, fees or um, there are organizations that are using ways to sell artist works but taking larger cuts from it for the you know going back to the exposure mm-hmm. <laughs> offer to yeah. people um there's a lot of different protection conversations that are coming up for artists um mm-hmm. and i feel like artists are finding different ways to support each other to figure out how to create their own mm-hmm. um, organizations mm-hmm. and how to create their own paywalls so it's mm-hmm. not just you know, the larger gatekeeping entities that are having to keep up with this moment, but right. artists are having to create, imagine, and innovate ways to to be more, to have more agency over how that work is circulated, you know? So that's, I, f- I find that to be interesting and overwhelming, both as a, as a person who wants to facilitate the work of others, but also a, as an artist myself, I, find, I, f- I feel quite overwhelmed about that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, I feel hopeful, that. but it's overwhelming. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
no, I can I can only imagine the the level of uncertainty and having to make decisions about what is in your best interest personally and professionally is um, wildly overwhelming, if not exhausting. And so um, it's a question that I I I I intend to ask everyone, knowing that people are, some people are going to just sort of be like you know, it's, I'm taking it day by day, you know, yeah. every, every day there's something new every day. There's a new piece of information or every day, something that was said yesterday is being rolled back. And so I have to take that into consideration. And so I, I appreciate your frankness with this. Mm -hmm. Um, just to wrap us up here. Um, what are you focusing on going forward? We're, we are officially in summer. And so what are you focusing on that may be taking the shape of, you know, something virtual and public, either via your website or in co collaboration? And also, how can people follow your work? So, okay. So what I'm shaping up for the summer... Um, Black Cinema Collective, we've taken a little bit of a break to sort of restructure ourselves and restructure how we want to do programming going forward. Um, I'm, I'm managing this, um, this baby with two wonderful human beings, Mateo Achoa and Savita Krishnamurti. Um, and they, and we're, we're all, I'm trying to create a, a democratic space where we all take on different ways of representing the black or Afro diaspora mm. locally and globally um, through mm. different points of views, because we're all, we all have different, we come from different places in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're doing that and trying to figure out how to make partnerships with um, Northwest Film Forum and the Henry a little more, um, a little more fluid <laughs> but figuring out how to pay people when they come to screen their work and how we do the discussion series that we've already started. So we'll be continuing that um, in the summer and you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Black Cinema Collective. Uh, you can find me and um, my, more about my art practice. Um, my website is barrettmacaulay.com and you can find me on Instagram at barrettmacaulay. Um, and also, I'm going to be starting a talk series with uh, my company, Imagine Evolve, coming soon. But that's as much as I'm going to say on that, because the thematics of it are to come. And that announcement will be um, out by end of July. Um, and then finally, I do have, going back to UMFON in Seattle, the, the um, curatorial program that we all partnered in, that we're going to be rolling out that that catalog next month that had to be delayed because of covid that was directly hit by covid right. and so i um, been trying to figure out when was the right timing to put that out that is actually available for order online via mag cloud but i can provide that link so that you can put it please, up on the please. written part of the page awesome well, Brett, thank you so much. This has really been amazing. I'm so glad that you were able to join us. Um, again, thank you to all of you who have tuned in and are paying attention to our virtual visits um, at the Fry Art Museum. So thank you, Brett, again. Thank you. thank you. And thanks to all of you. And we will be back again very soon with our third edition.